Have you ever watched the movie Catch Me If You Can? In the movie, the protagonist, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, cheats cash by forging checks, pretends to be a pilot to fly on high-end planes, and uses a fake Harvard medical degree to work as an emergency doctor in a hospital in Georgia. The main character in the movie is famous for his incredible talent for deception and trickery, and his story is still talked about today. But did you know that there is a similar case in China that's known as the Catch Me If You Can? The main character, despite only having a middle school education, managed to become a high-ranking executive in several different companies, earning a salary of several hundred thousand RMB a year. He didn't think much of this, and decided to take off with a huge amount of money. When he was caught, it was found out that he had even more dirty money, an additional 600,000 renminbi to be exact. How did he manage to pull that off? On February 10, 2020, a company in Nanjing, China was preparing to resume production, but the boss Sun Jian found that the company's financial system could not be accessed, and the U-Disc also showed unusual activity. Then, the information feedback from the bank was even more surprising. The company's account only had a few hundred yuan left, and the original 19 million renminbi disappeared without a trace. Sun Jian immediately reported the case to the authorities. After an investigation, the police discovered that the company's monitoring system had been shut down, and there was no useful video evidence. The information on the financial computer had also been completely erased, making it difficult for investigators to gather evidence. The police concluded that this was a planned attack by an internal staff member, and launched an internal investigation among employees. As a result, the company's financial director, Suan Nan, was found to be missing, and his office supplies had already been moved out. The entire room was spotlessly clean and there were no fingerprints to extract. Therefore, Suan Nan became an important suspect. The police believe that this guy named Suan Nan is a master at evading detection. It's very likely that the name Suan Nan is fake, and he might have a criminal record. The problem is, the police don't have any of his belongings, not even a single strand of hair. So, how are they going to confirm his identity? At this point, a female colleague mentioned that Suan Nan had once fixed a stool for her. With this information, the police were able to find Suan Nan's fingerprints on the stool. After a comparison, they were finally able to uncover Suan Nan's true identity. As it turns out, this Suan Nan guy wasn't a graduate of Renmin University, nor was he a highly talented financial manager with years of experience. In reality, he was a guy named Jean Engui with a criminal record of being in jail twice before, and his educational background only extended to finishing middle school. Jean Engui was born in 1980 in Huangdong City, Hubei Province, China. He grew up in a very ordinary family, where his parents were farmers with no fixed income, and relied mainly on their few acres of farmland to make a living. Jean's parents would sometimes go out to work in order to improve the family's economic conditions, but due to their low level of education, they could usually only find hard manual labor jobs, which was not enough to truly improve their family's life. Jean Engui grew up in a somewhat impoverished family, and he had always felt a bit insecure and dreamed of making big money. Although he was a smart child, he didn't apply himself in his studies, and didn't perform well in school. He dropped out of junior high and went to work. He didn't go far at first, just a few jobs he found locally in Hubei province. But since he didn't finish junior high, he could only find relatively low-paying jobs, and he barely earned enough to get by. Jean Engui felt that his life was not what he wanted, he wanted to earn a lot of money. So, he went to Shanghai to work hard. However, his junior high school education was not enough to find a suitable job in Shanghai. He was hitting walls everywhere, almost giving up on finding a job in Shanghai, when he saw a job advertisement. Although the work was tiring, it did not require a high level of education from its employees. Jean Engui seized the lifeline and immediately applied for the job at the company. The interviewer was also easy to talk to and hired Jean Engui, because he thought Jean was a good fit. That's how Jean Engui found his first job in Shanghai. He cherished this job very much and worked hard and earnestly. At first, Jean Engui got along pretty well with his colleagues. But as they got to know him better, some of them found out that Jean Engui was from the countryside and didn't even finish middle school. 
As a result, they started treating him differently. They would often make him do things that weren't part of his job, say mean things to him, and even make fun of his education. Even though Jean Engui didn't show any signs of being upset, he secretly resented the co-worker who made fun of him and planned to get payback someday. Before long, the opportunity presented itself. This colleague was a local from Shanghai and came from a relatively well-off family. One day, this colleague had an urgent need for a large sum of cash and went to the bank to withdraw the money, which was then brought to the company. John Engui happened to spot the cash and gave into his inner desire, stealing the 600,000 renminbi. Because it was his first time committing such an act, John Engui was still nervous. He didn't want to linger in the company after getting the money, so he came up with a flimsy excuse and left. Upon discovering the missing money, the colleague immediately reported to the police. John Engui, in a moment of impulse, stole some money. He wasn't prepared at all and didn't know what he was doing. The police easily caught him and found the stolen money on him. When they came to arrest him, he didn't put up any resistance and admitted to what he did. Because of that, he received a five-year prison sentence. John Engui was released from prison after serving a good three-year term. You'd think this experience would have taught him a lesson, but it turns out he went down a completely irreparable path. In 2009, after Jean Engui was released from prison, he began looking for work. Unfortunately, with his lack of education and criminal record, most companies rejected him after conducting a background check. With no luck on the job hunt, Jean Engui started to hatch a new plan. Since his life already had a mark against it, he decided to start fresh with a clean slate. In May of 2011, Jean Engui spent 500 yuan to purchase a set of fake documents including an ID card, household registration book, and diploma. With a new identity as Xiao Lirue, a college graduate from Yunnan University of Finance and Economics, he successfully applied for a cashier position at the project department of Sichuan Banan Expressway. In addition to his false identity and education, John Engui also fashioned himself into a wealthy second generation, who wanted to experience life at the grassroots level. He introduced himself to others as the child of business owners and came to work to gain some social experience with plans to eventually inherit the family fortunes. He was also generous to his colleagues, often treating them to meals and showing off his Mercedes car key, even though nobody ever saw the car. With a serious work attitude and slick interpersonal skills, Xiao Lirui quickly won the trust and admiration of his colleagues. After working at the company for four months, John Engui had gained access to all the company's financial information. While nobody was paying attention, he forged the signatures of the leaders, broke into the safe, stole the company's seal and U-Disc, and walked away with 7 million yuan of the company's money. The police quickly confirmed that it was this person named Xiao Lirui, who took the cash by checking the surveillance footage. However, because Xiao Lirui was a fake name, and all of his information was also false. The police kept investigating, but he seemed to have disappeared without a trace and couldn't be arrested. Finally, based on the clues provided by Xiao Lirui's girlfriend at the time, the police determined that this Xiao Lirui was actually Jean Engui. Although his identity was confirmed, where was he now? So the police registered Jean Engui's personal information on the internal network of the Public Security Bureau for pursuit. During his escape, Jean Engui kept using fake identities. First, he stole the identity of Wang Xiaolei and even talked to a girlfriend with this false identity. However, he never wanted to meet the girl's family and friends in person, rarely went to crowded places, and didn't like taking photos together. In early 2013, after a year of being on the run, Jean Engui used the identity of Luo Jingwu to go to the local police station to obtain a second-generation ID card which caught the attention of the police. After confirming that Luo Jingwu was actually Jean Ingui, the police finally arrested him in a small community in Qingdao Shandong province based on the address. He left at the police station. The cops raided Jean Ingui's crib and found a whole stash of fake IDs and bank cards. Like, around 40 to 50 of them. They managed to even retrieve over 4.1 million renminbi from these cards. But get this, Jean Engui actually had the audacity to assume a fake identity again, this time as some dude named Li Jinjong and started working for some construction crew in Qingdao. But as you might expect, 
he got caught again and was slapped with a seven-year sentence. John Angui had to go to prison again and this time, he had one personal interest, reading and learning, in addition to eating, sleeping, and working. While he was serving his sentence, he used his strong willpower to teach himself advanced accounting, law, and business management. He even signed up for a training course to prepare for the certified accountant exam. Thanks to his excellent behavior, Jean Angui was released early from prison once again, after serving only five years this time. There is a saying that goes once, twice, but not three times. Jean Angui had already been caught and sent to prison twice for stealing, so he must have learned his lesson and wouldn't make the same mistake again, right? But he was different from others. Instead of realizing his mistake after the two arrests, he actually learned from them. As soon as he was released from prison, he went back to his old ways. After being released from prison in 2018, Jean Angui became obsessed with online gambling, hoping to strike it rich. However, he ended up losing everything. As someone who had been in prison multiple times, finding a job was certainly not easy. In desperation, he thought of the person who had previously helped him forge documents. After some twists and turns, he managed to get in touch with him, and they both started engaging in illegal activities, such as selling personal information and fake documents. One day, while selling fake ID cards, he stumbled upon one with the name Suan Nan on it. This inspired John Angui to have a different idea. The picture on the ID card was strikingly similar to himself, so Jean Angui decided to use Suan Nan's identity to create an impressive resume for himself. Suan Nan was a registered accountant who had completed both undergraduate and graduate degrees in accounting at the prestigious Renmin University of China. He had worked as a financial manager for a well-known construction state-owned enterprise and possessed a wealth of financial experience. With his impressive resume, Jean Angui soon received interview invitations from several large companies. Many of them were impressed with him, but they all got stuck at the final stage of verifying his credentials. After numerous job rejections, Jean Angui finally came across an opportunity. A company located in Nanjing urgently needed to hire new employees due to rapid business growth, and the interviewer was the CEO himself, Sun Jian. Sun Jian personally interviewed Jean Angui, and during the interview, Jean Angui demonstrated his expertise in taxation, law, and investment. When Sun Jian asked him questions in those areas, Jean Angui not only answered them fluently, but also provided his own perspective. Sun Jian was very satisfied with his performance and qualifications. To pass the background check for his new job, Jean Angui made up a fake family background. He said his father died early on and that his mother ran a luxury goods shop in Nanjing. He even arranged for someone to pretend to be his mother and former boss to pass the company's background check. As for his registered accounting certificate, he said it was still with his previous company, which was preparing to go public, so it couldn't be transferred yet. This way, he didn't need the new company to help him pay social security. The company didn't look into it since they saved money on social security fees. The only thing that the company didn't do properly was verify his education. It's pretty common for Jean Ingui to have sent out resumes to a lot of different companies. So encountering one that was a bit careless in their hiring process is not surprising. On the other hand, when the boss himself is singing someone's praises loudly, even the reviewers couldn't help but let their guard down a bit. And that's how Suan Nan got hired without their credentials being checked, and rose to become a mid-level manager at the company with a monthly salary of 20,000 renminbi. After joining the company, Jean Angui worked diligently and got along well with his colleagues. He went by the alias Suan Nan and claimed to be a wealthy second-generation local in Nanjing. He said his mother ran a luxury goods counter in the epicenter of Nanjing, and that they even had a luxurious mansion there. In reality, however, where he lived was an hour's drive away from the epicenter. After starting his new job, Jean Angui frequently brought small gifts to his colleagues, such as Dior perfume for female colleagues, and a coach wallet for male colleagues, in order to win their favor. One enthusiastic co-worker offered to give him a ride to work, and in order to avoid suspicion, John woke up at 5 a.m. every day and took the crowded subway to New Street Station. He then pretended to walk out of the nearby residential area and hopped in his co-worker's car for a ride. He kept up this routine for eight months, without raising any suspicions. After getting to know his colleagues better, 
John Angui started inquiring about information on their boss. Upon learning that Sun loved playing table tennis, John Angui signed up for a training class to improve his skills. Soon enough, the company organized team building activities, and John Angui had the chance to play a game with Sun. Sun was very pleased with the competition. So on weekends he often invited John Angui to play together. Through textbook workplace tactics, John Angui quickly became a favorite by Sun's side. Of course, the thing that Sun appreciated most was John Angui's technical ability. When the company's computer broke down, John Angui immediately helped his colleagues fix it, allowing Sun's important files to be sent without a hitch. John Angui also excelled in his work. Even though he was in finance, he proactively helped the company to deal with two legal disputes, both of which were completely resolved without any damage to the company's benefits. At the same time, John Angui was also in charge of two investment projects worth over 100 million renminbi, earning the company a lot of profits. With such impressive work results, just three months later, Sun promoted John Angui to be the company's CFO, with an annual salary of 360,000 renminbi. But would John Angui be satisfied with pretending to be Suan Nan? Of course not, he was already preparing for a bigger game. In order to facilitate the embezzlement of the company's cash payout and UDISC password, John Angui proposed a new financial approval system, citing the unreasonable approval process of the fund approval process. He suggested that the company modify the approval system for fund output and reduce the approval process. This suggestion was supported by the boss, allowing John Angui to easily obtain payment authorization and UDISC custody. After everything was ready, on the Chinese New Year's Eve on January 24, 2020, John Angui first requested to stay alone in the company to be on duty, and then informed his colleagues that he was going on vacation with his girlfriend to England, and asked the boss for a long vacation. Colleagues who were eager to go home for the new year, didn't care about this at all. It happened that the epidemic hit, and this year's spring festival holiday was longer than usual, until February 10, 2020, when the scene mentioned in the beginning of the video appeared. When the police initially listed Suan Nan as a major suspect, everyone in the company was incredulous. Because Sun Jian even received Zhang Engli's work plan on January 28th. During the holiday, Suan Nan also sent a New Year's message, which shows how meticulous Zhang Engli's mind is. Zhang Engli had been planning all of this for months. He first took 20,000 renminbi and used the identities of two university students to register several shell companies, all with registered addresses in Shenzhen. Once he received 19 million renminbi, Zhang immediately transferred the money to the shell company's accounts, bought a train ticket to Shenzhen using a fake ID, and had the two university students go with him to withdraw all of the cash from the accounts. He never showed his face on camera during the entire process. To make the money easier to carry, he exchanged the 19 million renminbi for foreign currency and larger denominations, and put it all in a huge black suitcase, which he planned to use to flee the country. He tried to leave through Shenzhen, but was unsuccessful due to the pandemic at the time, so he returned to Guangzhou and stayed in a hotel, while waiting for his next opportunity. Zhang Engui was very methodical. He withdrew the money in Shenzhen, but stayed in Guangzhou. However, the police were able to track him down by matching footage from the train station surveillance cameras to his face, showing him carrying the large black suitcase holding 19 million renminbi in cash. This suitcase was his biggest mistake, as it was very conspicuous and made him stand out in a busy train station. The police continued to investigate by searching surveillance footage and discovered that he was staying in a hotel in Guangzhou. But by the time the police arrived, he had already left. Surveillance footage later showed him boarding a train from Guangzhou to Changsha and getting off midway. After a few days on the run, he showed up at the train station in Guiyang, where he tried to leave the country via the China-Myanmar border. However, due to the pandemic and heightened security, he was unable to leave. So he returned to Guiyang and found a place to stay. Eventually, the police were able to pinpoint his location to a residential building in a small community in Guiyang. In order to prevent him from destroying evidence, the police decided to arrest him while he was out. On the morning of February 21, 2020, a suspicious man walked out of the entrance of a building, wearing a wig and a disguise. 
plainclothes police officers recognized the man as Jean Ingui and apprehended him immediately. They also found a suitcase containing stolen money hidden in his room. After counting the money, every single dollar was recovered. In a bizarre turn of events, when the police returned Jean Ingui to Nanjing and returned the stolen money to the finance department of the company, when the money was exchanged into Chinese yuan due to exchange rate fluctuations, the 19 million renminbi turned into 19.6 million renminbi, netting a profit of 600,000 renminbi in less than a month. In court, knowledgeable lawyer Jean Engui knew that, if he was convicted of theft, the 19 million renminbi he took would be enough to land him in jail for life. So he refused to acknowledge the charge of theft and claimed that his motive for taking the money was pure greed. He admitted to illegally obtaining company funds by taking advantage of his position, but said it was only embezzlement. The maximum penalty for this crime is only 15 years in prison, much less than the punishment for theft. However, the prosecutor had strong evidence to refute Jean's claims. Firstly, after joining the company, Jean recruited two college students and registered multiple shell companies in Shenzhen using their personal information as preparation for later transferring the stolen money. This was premeditated. Secondly, Jean stole two UDIS passwords from his colleagues that he had no right to in order to transfer the 19 million renminbi. This act amounted to theft. In the end, Jean Engui was convicted of theft and sentenced to 15 years in prison with a fine of 800,000 renminbi. <laughs> On the surface, Jean's experience might seem quite impressive, even legendary. As a professional con artist, he managed to elevate himself to the position of CFO, with only a junior high school education, and he did a pretty good job at it too. It all seems like a comedy. On the other hand, Jean Engui was a highly gifted yet extremely insecure individual, who pushed himself deeper into darkness. Though he possessed great talent and strong willpower, he refused to use them for good. Instead, he constructed lie after lie to uphold his pitiful self-esteem and false life. In 2013, after his second imprisonment, CCTV went to Jean Engui's hometown for an interview. Throughout the interview, his father remained proud of his son, claiming he was a graduate of Tsinghua University. The proof is a mug with Tsinghua University, printed on it, sent by Jean Engui. During his interrogation by the police after his second arrest, Jean Engui initially insisted he was a graduate of Zhejiang University. When the lie was exposed, he grew impatient and began arguing with the interrogators. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And before you leave, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more. See you next time, and keep yourself safe.